Welcome to Fox Soul's Black Report, your space for black news, views, and opinions. Today is Tuesday, February 22nd. I'm Seth Lemon. I'm Demetria Obalor. I'm Romeo. I'm Demi Lobo. And on today's report, a judge rules the murder of Ahmaud Arbery was indeed a hate crime. What civil rights leaders are saying and the new holiday to honor Arbery's life. Meanwhile, as the countdown begins to resume student loan payments, there's a new pressure on the president to cancel payments, at least until the midterm elections. Then, trading Twitter for truth? After being banned from most platforms, the impeached former president returns to social media. Plus, a woman who thought she was helping a lost boy find his parents was conned out of thousands of dollars. How her kindness nearly cost her. And LeBron and Bronny? Could the GOAT extend his career by several years just to make NBA history with his family? We have all of that and so much more. This is our voice and our truth, so let's talk about it. Welcome in on this Tuesday, Guilty. Those were the words, the word, from the jury for person in the federal hate crimes trial against the three men who murdered Ahmad Arbery. A jury decided Greg and Travis McMichael, along with William Roddy Bryant, were all guilty of violating Ahmad Arbery's civil rights, targeting him because he was black. In addition, they were convicted of federal kidnapping charges. The men, already convicted of murder in state court, spending the rest of their lives in prison. And they now face prison as well for life on those federal charges. Arbery's family said they are relieved the trial is finally over. I'm very thankful that a, a good jury was selected. I wasn't worried at all that we wouldn't I knew Ahmad's hands was in this from the very beginning. Amen. Oh the McMichaels and the Bryans uh, and Bryans state convictions from November for felony murder. They came after the group chased the young black teen jogging through a Brunswick, Georgia neighborhood just because of his skin color. The verdict it comes almost two years to the day of Arbery's death. He was killed February 23rd, 2020. Now, the state of Georgia plans to formally memorialize Arbery tomorrow, which is the second anniversary of his death. Uh, legislators passed a resolution this month declaring February 23rd as Ahmad Arbery Day. Do we feel like this is justice? I mean, tomorrow is kind of symbolic, two years to the date, but now seeing the conviction at the state level, and at the federal level, is it enough? You know, I don't know if there's going to be anything that is enough. Uh, enough. A family member lost their loved one. So at the end of the day, uh, if that person is no longer with us, there is really no true justice. But I think it's a um, very strong point that we have to point out. Amon Arbery's mother thanking the fact that a good jury was chosen because who knows what would have happened if a good jury was not chosen if this would have happened. And so, of course, yeah. we're happy to see that. Well, you know what? The jury, they got it right. And now, as a parent, you never fully recover from having to bury your son, right, or your child. So, But now they don't have to revisit these stories and the incidents that happened over and over again. So they can kind of move on, and that's what we want them to do so they can try to start their healing process. Well, you know, guys, I'd like to see the public now turn its lens to the prosecutors who failed Ahmaud Arbery and his family. I'm talking about DA uh, Jackie Johnson, who's been indicted for obstruction after failing to prosecute the McMichaels and Brian, and also D.A. George Barnhill, who practically blamed Ahmaud Arbery for his own death and said his health records and prior convictions would explain away why Arbery would attack an armed man. These are quotes from that prosecutor. And so I think that it's very important to address the systemic racism that lies in these judicial systems. And now it's our job to focus on that and bring those people to justice. Yeah, mm. I agree. Yeah, you're absolutely right about absolutely. that. Absolutely. Uh, President Biden and Europe are in imposing new economic sanctions against the Russian government. This after Kremlin deployed what it calls peacekeeping troops to two regions in Ukraine Monday that are controlled by Moscow separatist groups. Russia says it will recognize those two territories controlled by Moscow-backed separatists. Now, Ukrainian officials say the separatists shelled areas of eastern Ukraine over the weekend. U.S. intelligence says the move by Russian President Vladimir Putin is a precursor to his country invading Ukraine. 
Kremlin officials say Putin made the decision based on what they claim is Ukrainian military aggression. But that country's officials deny any plans to launch a military offensive against the separatist groups. So uh, this entire situation is going to take, even if the, a war is stopped today, it's going to be so many after effects that it's going to take years for us to uh, get back on track. And so one thing that we're going to see happen is the gas prices here can start to surge. We saw the highest uh, gas prices in California uh, as an all-time year high yesterday on President's Day. And so they're saying that Russia could say, hey, we're just going to cut out no, no more oil. And that could be a residual effect here in the U.S. So for the people who think that this is just something happening overseas, the United States as well, we could have some really big residual effects if this is not stopped. And that's really the take home point, Demi, because you're talking about counter sanctions. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, President Biden has threatened to issue very, very, very harsh sanctions on Russia. And so now we're wondering how would they respond to that? And so not only are we concerned about gas prices, we're talking about energy bills, utility bills. And I think it's really important that people know right here at home how something like this so far overseas can affect us directly. That's right, Demetri. You think about it. Look, once we cross that line, we can't come back. I mean, if Russia does something, we react, and then they go bigger. We have to go bigger. So what's the effect? It's going to affect our country. We do understand that. So here at home, we have to keep our eyes open and watch out and see what's going on because, right, gas prices are going to be high. We're going to be affected in so many other ways. More troops may have to go over there if things really begin to get very dangerous. So we'll definitely have to keep our prayers up for them. Yeah, we're hoping to back up NATO without having to send additional you know, troops, really, any more lives don't need to be lost after what we saw play out in Afghanistan over such a long time. But but Putin is being very crafty, right? Like he's not invading per se. He sent these troops in there to maintain peace in an area that he considers all, already to be under Russian control. Uh, I, I don't know if he is inching along to see what the U.S. response will be. Like, OK, if I give them if I do a little bit, let's see right. how dramatic Biden will respond. So they've really got to play this game here because he's playing chess yes. and definitely not checkers. Tomorrow, we're going to check in with our Ukrainian expert, Terrell Starr. Mm -hmm. He's going to be joining us from the western part of the country where he's had to retreat yeah. uh, as this is all playing out. So we love when he checks in with us. Yeah. Definitely. Mm -hmm. All right, one of the officers involved in the arrest of George Floyd says he tried to help Floyd several times but was stopped by Derek Chauvin. Closing arguments began this morning in the federal civil rights trial against the men. Thomas Lane, who was a rookie at the time, became emotional when he was asked by a defense attorney Monday why he walked to the ambulance as EMT workers took Floyd to the vehicle. Lane said, quote, I felt with the situation they might need a hand. Prosecutors say Lane and his colleagues deprived Floyd of his civil rights. They say Lane and the others had deliberate indifference to Floyd's medical needs as Chauvin kneeled on his neck. Prosecutors say the officer's actions violated Floyd's civil rights, but Lane testified when he suggested rolling over on his side, rolling Floyd over on his side to help his breathing. Chauvin said no. Groups led by African-American women are gearing up to fight for the black woman who President Biden nominates to the Supreme Court. A piece published this weekend by The Hill website says the organizations plan on fundraising, advertising, and providing black female voices on TV news networks. It's all in an effort to beat back GOP attacks against the nominee. Karen Finney, a Democratic strategist, says conservatives are already attacking a nominee that hasn't even been named yet. Senator Ted Cruz says President Biden's decision to pick a black black woman for the high court is racial discrimination. The Truth Social, a new social media platform backed by former President Donald Trump, is topping the download charts on Apple. The platform unveiled a soft launch late Sunday, but many users were prompted to join the wait list. Some who tried to sign up reported glitches when they were trying to create a new account. According to screenshots on the app's listing page, the platform's design it very closely resembles Twitter one of the social media platforms that suspended Trump in the wake of the January 6th insurrection. Truth Social has been delayed several times. The full launch was first planned for yesterday. That date has now been pushed back to March 31st. President Biden is facing pressure from some Democrats to keep student loan payments on hold, at least until the November elections. Student loan payments are scheduled to resume on May 1st. Now, Democratic strategists, they're worried about upsetting young voters. Uh, they are angry the president has not canceled billions of dollars in student debt. Democrats believe the turnout among young voters will be low if student loan payments resume before the midterm elections. They are also worried about losing control of the Senate and how House 
this fall. And so just going back to my good sis here, Senator Elizabeth Warren, I love every time she tweets about student loan debt because it is a piece of my heart that just goes out to her. <laughs> it wants to just retweet everything that she says because she really brings it home. And one thing that she said is that 80 percent, uh, 86 percent of black students take out federal student loan uh, for student loans for college. Twenty percent more higher points, higher, excuse me, 20 percent higher than our white counterparts. I am one of those people, thousands of debt, almost hundreds of thousands, it feels like, in student loan debt. And she she says that with a stroke of a pen, that President Biden can cancel student loan debt. And we also saw that $415 million uh, was approved loan, student loan forgiveness for those who were defrauded by their schools. I feel like we're getting close here, but why can't we just do a full overhaul of student loan debt? Why is he picking where he wants to do this? If ed education is the great equalizer, then it makes sense that black students have been on, on the bottom receiving end for a long time and trying to get loans to go to school because they don't have the same kind of wealth mm -hmm. resources to go to school on their own. It would make sense to maybe provide reparations through something like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. I love yeah, that. Great. All right, Senator Mitt Romney is trying to revive the extended child tax credit. The credit which helped millions of families last year with money, money, more food and clothing and child care was now renewed for this year. But Romney's version of the monthly payments will be more restrictive. It would have tougher work requirements. The new version would also slash programs that help poor Americans. And Romney's bill would make major changes to the tax code. Congressional experts say the work requirements and reduced safety net will be tough for Democrats to approve. Romney has worked with other Republicans on the new child tax credit. In recent weeks, he has talked to Democrats hoping they will work with him on a new measure. A black Wisconsin man shot five times by cops in the state capitol earlier this month was not armed. The family of Quadron Wilson says police shot him five times. Cops are refusing to say if Wilson was shot. They said he was arrested on a drug violation. Investigators say Wilson suffered non-life-threatening injuries during the arrest, but they have not described what the injuries were. However, police did admit that two officers fired their weapons during the incident. A West Palm Beach cop is out on bail after being arrested for severely beating a 64-year-old black man back in 2019. Now, WPTV says police arrested Nicholas Lordi for assaulting John Moronka. The news station says while the white cop has been disciplined five times by the police department, adding that he beat a Moronka outside the grocery store, the station says Lordi has also been involved in at least 15 use of force incidents. Moronka suffered a broken nose in this incident that you see the video there from 2020 posted on Instagram about six months after the other incident, but it took until last week for state police to even arrest the officer. The parents of a black man beaten to death by a mob in Greece are hoping a new trial gets justice for their son. The pandemic has delayed a retrial and the death of 22 year old Bakari Henderson. The 22-year-old Texan was hanging out in a Greek bar with friends when a white woman took a selfie with him. That angered one of the men in the bar who attacked Henderson. Now, investigators say Henderson was chased into the street by a mob who beat him to death. In 2018, six of the nine men were convicted of assault with sentences from five to 15 years. Unlike the U.S., Greece allows people to be charged with the same crime twice. A Greek prosecutor has ordered the men to be retried for murder. Uh, as a traveler, this story frightens me um, because one, it just shows that being black in Europe is dangerous and then, you know, you could not get justice if you are tragically murdered in this way. And so I really found it interesting of uh, the, the waitress who says that they took the photo. She was telling the story, but I could just honestly, I wonder how she's feeling right now because I mean, this kind of all stems from the one selfie that she wanted to take with him. Well, for me, Demi, this story, I mean, just takes me right back to the tragic slaying of Emmett Till. I mean, 67 years ago, we're talking about a young man who was accused of flirting or whistling at a woman and was killed as a result, a lynching. And so when we see this, I think modern day lynching overseas. Think about the family, of course, who is suffering right now. But it just shows us how far yet we still have to go and how little it takes for a young Young black person to do to be killed in such a manner. And just being killed for literally just being black. That's what the problem is. And Demetri, you said it right 67 years later, and we're still dealing with the same issues and the same problems. We still sometimes have to live in fear if we go abroad. And more importantly, even in our own backyards, in our own neighborhoods, we have to be in fear. And at some point, we have to make things better. 
All right, the founder of 27-year-old man killed by Houston police earlier this month says cops did not identify themselves when they tried to arrest him. Newly released police body cam footage shows cops open fire from a patrol car. Cops say they were trying to arrest Lockett on an aggravated robbery charge, but Lockett's family say cops never told a young man who they were as they approached him. Cops say as they approached Lockett, who was sitting in his car to, to try to drive away, he began shooting at them. But attorneys say there is no proof in the video that Lockett fired at cops. Lockett's family says they will file a federal lawsuit against Houston police. Memphis police say they are looking for two people of interest in the death of rapper Young Dolph. Investigators say they are looking for Devin Burns and Joshua Taylor. Young Dolph, whose real name was Adolph Thornton Jr., was killed outside of a cookie store in South Memphis last November. Two other men have already been arrested and charged in the rapper's death. Cornelius Smith and Justin Johnson have been charged with first-degree murder. An L.A. County Sheriff's deputy says he himself took part in seven tattoo parties involving fellow deputies. Whistleblowers within the department say the parties were for members of a gang-like group at the Compton, California Sheriff's Station. Now, during a deposition this month, the L.A. Times reports that Deputy Jaime Juarez was directed by county lawyers not to answer questions about whether he actually has the executioner tattoo. It's reportedly the emblem for an alleged gang within the police force known as the Compton executioners. Several deputies have come forward in recent years to expose the group. Black and Latino Compton residents have complained about the deputy gang for years. There's video that shows them allegedly beating on residents. East LA residents say they also have a gang problem within their neighborhood's sheriff station. LA County Sheriff Alex Villanueva banned clicks in the department back in 2020, but they still allegedly are rampant throughout the department.